playing fields. Um, but that being said, obviously, uh, myself and, and under my leadership, I have uh, three full-time employees, and and we, we split the sports up amongst ourselves. I you know have a heavy involvement in football, but I'm going to jump in where I need to with the different sports, athletic departments, uh, groups on campus, uh, what have you. And then with that, we've got a couple of interns and GAs uh, that we split up amongst the sports, Olympic sports and football. Uh, we have 13 students that help out with football specifically, uh, along with uh, five managers for each basketball program. Then some of the other sports have a couple of managers, you know, here or there that, that help out with their day-to-day practices and whatnot. Uh, but but that's kind of a snapshot of our group. We've we've got some some students that help us at our issue window, um, you know, and handle kind of the day-to-day the day-to-day deals of uh, details of you know whether it's a student that needs a pair of socks or a pair of gloves and those sort of things so we can kind of ha- we can manage the high level things um you know that that we're getting ready for this game this weekend and you know it's it's not just football it's it's marketing it's events it's compliance it's academics it's anybody and everybody that touches and helps football so we're we're, we're going to hand in all that and um you know, it's just a big, big army. Like I said, it takes a village for sure. It's awesome. I love how so many students are involved, and it's kind of a great learning experience for them. Yeah. And whether they becomes part of their careers or not, or just getting organized yeah. and looking at the discipline that your department yeah. provides. Can Can you just share how, how does how do you even recruit the students? How do they get involved in, in on your team? And maybe there might be some interested folks on well, getting involved in the future. Well, I think I think a good uh, a good. Uh, a good way to describe that or paint a picture there is to tell you my story. Um, you know, I was in their shoes, exactly. I, I was uh, 2001, came to college. I uh, was working 40 hours a week at Publix while going to school. And one one night I was being a college student, of course, on a Friday night and watching a little college football and hanging out with the fellas. And uh, my next-door neighbor came over and knew that I liked football and, and came over and said, hey, my boss is looking to hire somebody. And uh, we're, 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 we're working with the football team. And I said... When do I start? Didn't even know what it was. I just, you know, just said, uh, quit, call my boss at Publix the next day. I said, hey, I got another job. And here we are. Uh, seven. And here we are live back again. Derek Sharp here with you. I told you we wouldn't have to wait too long for soccer. Live at Corbett Stadium in Tampa, Florida, USF and Virginia Tech. A slight weather delay. Not that bad of one, obviously, as we are going to kick off. A little bit less than 20 minutes past the scheduled start time. And frankly, you know, if 7 o'clock is the scheduled start time, you're, you're really kicking off at 5 after. And we're going to kick this one off around 20 after, so not a bad deal. The USF Bulls 0-2 on the season after a very difficult start schedule-wise going up to the state of Michigan, playing a couple of ranked teams yet to score a goal. And that's going to be the big issue. While Virginia Tech has a couple of 2-1 wins, including one last weekend in overtime against Gardner-Webb. USF with Harrison Devinish Mears, the starting goalkeeper. Defense tonight, Corey Cupid, Marcus Murphy, Jonathan Rosales, and AO, Avion Flanagan, of course, without one player who has been a big part of that defense, Henry Galina, who got the red card in that game against Michigan on Monday night, and that's why he must sit this one out. In the midfield, Josue Monje running things with that number 10. Emilio Icaza and Richard Laval also around him. And up top, it's going to be Adrian Billhart, the super sophomore from Germany, along with Trey Jackson, another sophomore, and Thomas Skublock is going to take the opening kick and as a bit of a ceremony here. They're just knocking the ball around. It would appear they want to make sure that the ball is not waterlogged. It has been a wet day, as you would imagine, in the Tampa Bay area. You know why? Because it's late summer. I hear that there's something called Labor Labor Day coming up, which would ordinarily mark the turn of the season's calendar, but nope. So they're knocking the ball around here. Both sides actually getting a few extra touches in. It'll give me time to give the Virginia Tech starting lineup before the first kickoff instead of as we go. And their goalkeeper, who Matthias Swanefeld has gone right into the lineup in his freshman season, and several Virginia Tech players can stake the same claim. And this is a team that has made the NCAA tournament a couple of years in a row. So to crack the starting lineup in a fre- as a freshman, and especially as an important position as goalkeeper, is pretty impressive. On defense, Will Mejia getting his first start of the season for those guys, along with John Ingeson, Nico Kwashi, and Mark Hopler. He is listed as a defensive player, but really he has come on and scored two key goals for Virginia Tech. Midfield as we get underway, Brandon Moyers, Sivert, Howley, 
Emil Coho in the five-man midfield, Christo Streakler and Roy Steven. And up top, James Kasak, who has been something for the Hokies this year. And the fact that he has three assists, they have four goals, he assisted on three of them. And coming into this season in his first two years combined, he only had two goals and an assist. So if you think as the ball trickles out of bounds, 30 seconds in, it'll be a Virginia Tech throw in as they get the Hokies go right to left. If you think that a guy like, as I would have on first glance, and maybe I did, Kasak is, you know, he's been with the team for years. He's a junior. He's kind of a reliable scorer. No, he's just been really good in their first couple of games in creating scoring situations. Virginia Tech going right to left on this very humid night. You could always tell the exact level of humidity by the humidity of the window right in front of me. So we have a fantastic crew of squeegee people here, thank goodness, at Corbett Stadium. And if it was just for me, I'd feel a little bit guilty that the entire press box needs the service every five minutes or so. Speaking of service, Virginia Tech is going to be able to get one in on the left side and looks like coming to take a long throw is going to be Brendan Moyers, a junior. And he has three players inside the box. He's going to try and get it to one of them, but it's headed away by the Bulls. Good job there. And Adrian Billhart tries to chase it out of bounds or get to it before it gets out of bounds, but instead... It'll be Hokies ball. The Bulls on a blackout night here, wearing the black slow flow combination, quite something. And that ball is going to go over to the Bulls on a foul as Virginia Tech tried to work something in the left corner, but it required a little bit of a push off by the offensive player there, Moyers, and so therefore the Bulls get it back. That's what was Kasak actually. Looks like we'll be saying his name a lot as he is the lone man listed up top for the Hokies. Ball sent up towards USF's attacking zone and Skublock with a nice win of a header. And it's deflected off a Virginia Tech player out of bounds. It'll be Rosales taking the throw for the Bulls who have yet to really maintain possession. Hope to get it a little bit here and Jose Monje does so. Slots it off to the right-hand side but Skublock unable to chase it down and it'll be a throw in for Virginia Tech, but deep in the Bulls defensive zone. Just underway here, three minutes to go. We want to really thank you for joining us on Bulls Unlimited and or if you're watching us on YouTube. As it's USF and Virginia Tech, the home opener for the Bulls. There's Marcus Murphy, a freshman, playing it back to his goalkeeper, Harrison Devonish Mears. And something that you could see A.O. Havion Flanagan, left-hand side of the field as the Bulls look to get some possession going here. And you could see at the beginning of the season that despite all of the, listen, when you go by preseason selections, what are you going by, right? Stats. You can't pick a freshman to be a, an all-conference player, can you? You have to go by returners and stats. Well, Christian Knight, the returning goalkeeper for the Bulls starter, had the best stats of any returning goalkeeper in the league. So guess who was named the preseason goalie of the year in the conference? Christian Knight hasn't played yet. It's been all Harrison Devonish Mears, even though Knight stayed home from that last game against Michigan with an injury. You see Devonish Mears in the starting lineup here tonight. Hey, Bob Butehorn's team definitely have some options there. It'll be a Virginia Tech throw on the far side in its own defensive half. Hokies had a little bit of a uprising the first couple of minutes of the, this game with a long throw, but nothing yet. And really, the thing that we'll be looking for for obvious reasons, the Bulls looking to get their first goal of the season, but also the fact that the Hokies have surrendered a goal in the first half of both of their games this year, even though they've been able to overcome them and win both games by the score of 2-1. to one. Ball won on the far side of the field by Monhe. You see the Bulls trying to get a couple of passes together here, and it's it's been tough going, but Monhe has won the ball back. Springs it forward, Bill Hart looked like he had something going, loses the ball, but instead it's chipped forward and the Bulls might have something here. Across into the center of the box and headed away by Virginia Tech. A fantastic cross there, but also a good response by the Bulls. No shots on goal yet for either team. Bill Hart tries to regain control. Pops it back into the defensive zone up the right hand flank to Rosales who chips it back to his fellow center back Murphy but Rosales pinching up the field a little bit here in this 
two forward, uh, three, three, four alignment for the Bulls, front to back in that case. Bill Hart chests it down to Monhe. A quick response to Bill Hart, who has a chance here. Slots a long shot, and it's going to be handled by the goalkeeper, Swanneville, but giving it a go for the first shot of the game. And that was a good combination by the Bulls as it was Monhe getting the pass from Bill Hart and instantly feeding it right back to him. And Adrian was going to have a go from about 20 yards there, and it was well saved by Swanneville, but the first really threat of the night for the Bulls. A little bit of an encouraging sign. A team that's hoping for encouraging signs as Virginia Tech moves the ball back up the pitch on the right-hand side, far side. Again, moving from our right to left. The Hokies wearing their white jerseys with the orange numerals. The Bulls with the black jerseys and the SoFlo numerals, which I'll go ahead and tell you, not that you're going to feel sorry for me, or kind of hard to read. So if there's a player that's, eh, let's say, within 75 yards, I got a good look at him. But on the other side of the field, might be difficult. Right now, speaking of that, it's almost like the Bulls are listening to me right in front of me is Rosales. As he nears the midfield stripe, touches it off to Bill Hart. Six and a half minutes in, no score. Bulls and Hokies. There's Laval, Richard Laval. USF is working in a lot of freshmen on this team. And they knew that they were gonna have to replace some solid contributors to the lineup last year, especially a couple of central defenders. And whenever that happens, it might not all come together right away, but really that hasn't been the problem for the Bulls. It's been getting it to come together on the offensive side, not only without many goals, or any goals, I should say, but not too many shots on goal, just nine in their first two games. And when I sh say shots on goal, I correct myself instantly. It's just shots, period, much less on goal. Scublock gets a nice long pass. He's going to try and do something with it, namely find Bill Hart. Ball is a little bit away from Bill Hart and intercepted by the Hokies. Sliding effort there by Monhey to try and keep the ball in the Bulls' possession, but... He instead pushes off, or at least was just to do that, and it'll be Hokie's ball. And the offense has not produced for the Bulls. They lost their number 10 player, Gomez. They did, of course, bring back some scores, and Stephen Rutterham is a guy who had a hat trick in the preseason. Out there, if you're watching us on YouTube with the orange boots. Scublock, when he gets it going, gets in that zone, especially with the head, can score but they just really haven't had that many chances as I say nine shots in two games and looking for a better build up tonight we've seen a little bit Flanagan's going to try and build it up down the left flank slots it over to Jackson who is defended well by two players and it's going to get knocked away not a convincing clearance though and USF will regain possession right at midfield that's Marcus Murphy one of those freshmen playing it to Rosales who has no one on him up from defense and has plenty of time to consider his options. It's Monhe on the right-hand side as the Bulls look to put something together here as we approach nine minutes. Scublock towards the center. Sees Jackson on that left-hand side. Cross in, and that is a header, and it's just over the net. A lot of the fans thought maybe that was in, but it was a pass from Flanagan to Jackson and a... Well struck header that just went over the crossbar. One of those optical illusions that you get sometime in soccer. And that's why you heard the reaction from the crowd thinking it was a goal, but it was definitely a couple of feet over the crossbar, but still a positive sign for the Bulls. The second weekend of the college season. Everyone in the American Athletic Conference is playing tonight, including UConn playing a very, very rugged weekend in Indiana. That's the team that is off to an impressive start for the Bulls and are for the conference, UConn, and we'll see how they do this weekend against Notre Dame in Indiana. Fancy move by Scublock. You heard the crowd react, but up the pitch right away is Virginia Tech, and that's a chance. A shot deflected away, though, by the Bulls, and that was Cupid. He was getting plenty of time. In his sophomore season on that back line, Corey Cupid with a very, very assured clearance of a shot that looked pretty dangerous by Brendan Moyers, who's had some good play here so far tonight. 
It'll go down as the first shot of the game by Virginia Tech, even though it didn't reach the goalkeeper. It's, you know, some of those that aren't shots on goal, there almost needs to be another category for block shots because that certainly was a threat and a very big threat for Virginia Tech in the 10th minute of this game. Going to be a chance for a free kick here for the Hokies as rightfully called for the foul about 35 yards from net are the Bulls. So the Hokies made the NCAA tournament the last couple of years, advanced into the third round two years ago. And just to give you an idea of how strong that ACC conference is and how well it is considered as far as by the NCAA tournament committee, they were actually below 500 in conference last year and 10 and 10 in the regular season, but that was enough to get them in. And they were a solid team. Free kick there and a punch away by Devonish Mears on a headed cross by Virginia Tech. Sharp, you can't call it a save, but certainly play by the USF goalkeeper and keeps it scoreless here. 11 and a half minutes in. Up from defense for the Hokies to try and head that ball was the kid Hoppler and let me tell you, you could see where, I'm sorry, that was Howley. You could see where both Howley and Hoppler are very dangerous even though they're listed as defensive players. A dangerous looking chance there, but Trey Jackson gets a little too much underneath it and it goes out for a goal kick. Derek Sharp here with you. We are 12 minutes in. Bulls and Virginia Tech Hokies. Virginia Tech has a line of Orange clad would be reserves all ready to go into the game. That's one thing I noticed in preparing, preparing for this game that Virginia Tech has played a lot of more players, a lot more minutes. The Bulls essentially, their bench was 40 where you look at the Virginia Tech roster. And I have a code, a highlighted code. Players that have played all 200 minutes, remember they had a overtime game. Players that have played around 150 and players that have played a decent amount. And there's a lot of players highlighted. 16 or so, so Virginia Tech may be able to work the bench a little bit more. Bulls went offsides there and they get it as it was a reasonably efforted pass by Roy Slevin, the senior from Virginia Tech out of Middletown, New Jersey. They do have players from Virginia on their team as you would imagine and then sprinkled around the country and then sprinkled around a ton of other countries. The Guy I've mentioned a couple times already, Hoppler has scored a goal in each game as they are 2-0, and, and he is a Swiss national player, a transfer from Roanoke. Oh, a nice flick back pass there by Kwashi up on the left-hand side, and a cross in by Kasak, which has been his modus operandi this year to cross the ball in, but it didn't result in anything. But Virginia Tech regains control. Bulls have to clear it out. And they do, only to see Virginia Tech work it into the corner, back across the general vicinity of the goal mouth, but well out of bounds. So the Bulls hanging in with the Hokies. That's one thing that Bob Uthorn, the Bulls coach, certainly wants to see if his team can do against an extremely strong opening slate to the season. Playing the number seven team in the country, now number five, incidentally, moved up after one week in Michigan State. Bulls had them basically firmly out of goal scoring opportunities for most of that game. Michigan State score with three and a half minutes to go, beat the Bulls 1-0. The only downer was the Bulls only had the one shot on goal. Then Monday figured against a less defensive team, Michigan, that the Bulls might have a chance. Handball there, but there was going to be a play on, good play on. Rudderham has the ball as the Bulls moving up the pitch, tries to scoot around, slotted forward to Jackson on the left-hand side, but it was intercepted by Virginia Tech. Now the Hokies look to counter. It's a two on two, and now they have a three on two. The Bulls need to get back, and they don't have that covered as it's a chipped pass and cleared away at the last moment. Virginia Tech's Brandon Moyers had a chance there, and fortunately the Bulls got back. It was Marcus Murphy, the freshman, timing his recovery pretty well, or else that ball would have been a free and clear shot for the Hokies on the counter attack 15 minutes in. The Bulls on Monday night against Michigan, you think would have had better chance to score, but boy, when you go down 
a player on the pitch as the Bulls did when Enrique Galina, the defensive player, picked up his second yellow card in the first half. It is really tough, especially against an aggressive team like Michigan. The Bulls ended up losing 2-0, only getting one shot in the second half. But more level terms here tonight. And so far, they have a couple of decent scoring opportunities. But so do the Hokies. The Bulls continue to play good defense, but more and more of late scrambling at the last second. Good play there by the Bulls to draw Virginia Tech off sides, even though the Hokies protest that particular call. It was the right one. A couple of offsides now committed by Virginia Tech. As I was saying earlier, 10 and 10 overall good enough to get into the NCAA tournament last year. And it's one of those things where you look at it and you think, how can a team have a below 500 record and still get into the field? But hey, listen, if you if you've got a if you've got a conference that has all the good teams in it or so many good teams in it, you're just mathematically. The teams that are in the middle of the packer, one of them is probably going to be below 500, but still be good enough to get into the field. And last year, that was the case with Virginia Tech. And sure enough, they won an NCAA tournament game against Air Force before losing to the team we were just talking about, Michigan State, 3-0 in the second round. We are 17 minutes left, are gone here in the first half. USF and Virginia Tech zip-zip. Last time these teams played was a couple of seasons ago. Bulls won that game 4-1. to one. That was the year that USF made the NCAA tournament the last time, two years ago. And a player on the Hokies roster that knows a little bit about that as the Bulls try a long cross-the-field pass, but it goes out of bounds. It'll be Virginia Tech throw in in its own half, right in front of its penalty box, looking to reestablish possession is Sievert Howley who is one of those international players I mentioned. He is from Norway. They have an Icelander. There will be a USF throw in here. On the opposite side, they have, I mentioned the Swiss standout so far, transfer from Roanoke. Hopler, Mark Hopler. Got a couple of Canadians. Republic of Korea, so they've really got the globe covered here, this Virginia Tech team. Bulls, certainly have a similar philosophy. Right now the philosophy is to try and gain some possession here. It seems like any time the Bulls have the ball in the midfield, they are instantly being pressed and haven't gotten comfortable until they've gotten one of the defenders pushed up on the flank, but then any attempt to play the ball into the middle is quickly intercepted. Now Trey Jackson has a little room. He had to create it, though. He's looking for help. He's having to dribble around. And he finds some help as Rutterham slots open onto the right side of the midfield circle. It's Rosales, pushes up the right wing to Billhart. Bulls may have something on here. Billhart slots it in the middle, and there's a quick shot and a block. Well done there, well worked. And again, Billhart is in the middle of it as Jose Monje, Josue Monje, who fed Billhart for the game's first chance for the Bulls. Got the return pass there, but again, it was blocked away. And well done by the Hokies. Bulls have to reset as we are one minute shy of 20 in. Looking better right now for USF. Monhey has the ball. He has been really alert out there. Tries a long ball. Saw Trey Jackson creeping in from the left side. It goes over his head, but Jackson uses his speed to run it down. Drops it off to Flanagan. And there's a pass that Bill Hart tried to chip on the half volley, but couldn't quite get it. Still good ideas, and it seems like right in the middle of them right now, especially are Bill Hart and Monhey. Bulls lose possession there. A little bit of a disappointment as it looked like they had something going. Virginia Tech losing the possession but gaining it back, and now up the right wing has a chance. They don't have numbers though. Two on four individual effort there and slotted in the middle. Oh, a runner. Almost got a shot off, but not quite. The ball gets out, and oh, what a save by Harrison Devonish Mears. It rolled out to the top of the box, and on the trail, Rory Slevin had a fantastic low shot. It was ticketed for the inside corner of the left post, and Devonish Mears dives to his right to keep this game scoreless. So the clearly best opportunity of the night for Virginia Tech 
that the junior from Australia gets a couple of fingers on it. And that is going to be enough, as I say, to keep it scoreless. Still results in a corner kick from the left side for the Hokies. And let's see who gets the call here. It's going to be another corner. And as Rosales got his boot on it. Everyone in the slick Adidas black uniforms that USF is wearing tonight put their hands up. Up, but, you know, it's just a soccer reflex. Even if the ball might have been out on you. Oh, that's an incoming header again. Devinish Mears balls in front and it's in. The ball ricocheted around and was booted in. I see a couple of players that could have all claimed that goal because everyone was kicking at it. And Virginia Tech gets on top. It was a dangerous ball the whole way through. Harrison Devinish Mears had the first save, but the Hokies, right near the 21 minute mark of this game, break through. The individual who scored will turn around. It looks like Christo Strickler getting the goal for Virginia Tech. But really, there was any one of two or three Hokies that could have put that one in. And unofficially, it's Strickler who gets the goal. Well worked. And as I was saying before, the Bulls had kind of started to take possession of this thing, but Virginia Tech pushed back and got that goal. And now the Bulls look to answer right back. Remember, Virginia Tech has surrendered a goal, and maybe this is the best time. Bill Hart up the pitch on the right-hand side. And in the middle, Scooblock had a shot, and it was knocked away. Boy, Virginia Tech's goalkeeper, Swanefeld, is not having to work that hard. Well, he's, he's having to sweat, but he's gotten some shots blocked throughout the course of this game, and it just happened again as Scooblock took the ball from Bill Hart. So a nice answer by the Bulls to giving up the first goal of the game. Less than a minute, they almost had an answer right back. The goal score indeed is, well, let's, let's get this corner kick first as it's Monhe getting the ball out. Similar situation to Virginia Tech tries to make something out of it. Inside, settled by Jackson, but knocked away again by Virginia Tech. That was Strickler's first goal of the season. He did come in with four shots, so threatening to score and pouncing on a loose ball in front of the net. And frankly, you could just see that as good of an effort as the Bulls goalkeeper Harrison Devinish Mears was putting out. You could just see a goal in the making there for Virginia Tech. It was too dangerous of an opportunity off the corner kick. Now the Bulls again have held the better of the possession in the next two minutes. Headed down by Rutterham to Skublock. Knocked away by Virginia Tech. No subs in this game yet for either team. Brandon Moyers just cleared that ball away. We'll let you know when and if there is a substitution. Bulls almost saw that a corner kick work there. As it was Avion Flanagan coming up from his deep position, doing the not complete dive, sort of the I think he would dive into the shallow end of the pool dive just in case the referee's in a giving mood. Got to test that out. No referee should be in that giving of a mood. There was no foul there. And with the goal kick, Swanefell puts it up the park. And it's going to bound out to the right side. Will the Bulls let it go out of bounds? Well, Murphy is going to go ahead. And Rosales, I'm sorry, is going to go ahead and play it. Cleared back away by Virginia Tech's Will Mejia, who is getting his first start of the season. Junior out of Falls Church, Virginia. 24 minutes, just past the halfway point of the first half. The Bulls still without a goal this season and now trailing 1-0 in this game. Good effort there by Rosales to win a battle temporarily with James Kasak, but Kasak gets the throw in and puts it back into that goal scorer, Strickler, and well, you could tell he had the confidence of someone who just recently scored a goal because he tried a back heel pass into the center of the box with no real knowledge of who was coming there, if anyone. And turns out it was no one. Bulls get the ball. Nothing like feeling it out there. The ball for the Bulls. Marked well by his fellow number six counterpart, Moyers. 
and finds Skublak up the field, a nice low pass. Now the Bulls might have something working here. Monhe, a little bit of a heavy touch, tries to gather it back, cannot. Dispossessed by Virginia Tech, just as it looked like the Bulls had something. Ooh, a little bit of a pull there. Cupid definitely will get flagged for that, maybe a little bit too aggressive. And Cupid, I'm sure, got a stern warning. The sophomore Trinidadian defender by USF. One more of those, and I'm sure a card is coming out. Bulls got called for four cards, yellow cards, including, again, the two on Galena that set them down. A man for the entire second half of the game lost Monday night against Michigan. The Hokies, incidentally, have just been cautioned four times in their two games, so they played it pretty cleanly. It's been a great, great start to the season for Virginia Tech, except for the offsides category. That is going to be their third committed tonight as we just cross 25 minutes in this game. When I say it's been a great start of the season for the Hokies, not just the two to one pair of regular season victories, but three and oh in the preseason. A little bit of a dangerous pass back. Devonish Mears can't pick the ball up. Strickler was back there to keep a close eye on him. And therefore Mears has to play it out. Battle for possession. Ball getting headed in the air randomly by both sides. Flanagan, the latest to actually create something for the Bulls. Rutterham has found his way over to the left side. And the ball finds its way over there to Jackson. Looks to pinch it forward to Billhart, who's going to chase the ball down. And oh, almost knocked it in off the defender. There were three Hokies, all of whom could have controlled that ball. And Billhart, sheer effort. Almost knocked it in off, we did knock it off a Hokies player and almost passed the goalkeeper. That would have been some way to break the ribbon for the Bulls this year scoring wise. You gotta give Bill Hart all the credit in the world for trying to create something out of nothing there. Now the Hokies on the counter and a touch pass off to the left hand side. Into the middle, Devish, Devonish Mears has to punch it away as man. Kasak, Kasak, I'm sorry, K-A-S-A-K. -A -A it's not the easiest name to pronounce, I'm telling you. I'll get it right if you're watching this in Virginia. My apologies. Remember, it's humid. I'm looking through a humid press box. So six and eight are very similar, and Kasak is just not a common name. Or is Kasak. Trey Jackson, well, that's not a common move. He flicks it around two Hokies over to Bill Hart, who tries to slot it onto a rushing foot of Skublock, but a little bit too far. More on that near goal by Bill Hart, where he, again, had a one-on-three situation that didn't look like it had any business presenting a goal opportunity. Right afterwards, the Virginia Tech coaches all stood up and didn't look too pleased with that whole situation but did not cost them in the end. Good crowd here on a Friday night. Certainly everyone happy to see the Bulls with their home opener and hoping to cheer them on to a victory. Nico Kwashi, the right-hand side for Virginia Tech, looks to play it in the center. It's back to another player and good shot off the foot of Coho and Devonish Mir had to Sky just a little bit to pick that one up, and he does a good job of doing it. Bulls back on the counter as Trey Jackson loses possession of the ball. Well defended there by Virginia Tech. A little bit surprised as we near the half hour mark that neither team has made a substitution. James Kasich, gonna throw the ball right in front of me. If you'll note, the Hokies have not the names on the back of their jerseys, but just the word Hokies. USF has the Bullhorn U above the jersey numbers. A very, very sharp look sculpted by Adidas. Oh, big physical play there by Adrian Billhart on the opposite end, winning a challenge against a Hokie. It would have been a little bit of a foul question there, but the whistle stays unblown. A couple of Hokies getting set to come into the game. Harrison Devonish Mears, the Bulls goalie, looking for an option as he plays a long ball. 
well over the center line at the half hour mark. Skublak with that tall frame, heads it forward to Trey Jackson. Takes on two defenders, tries to find an opening for a teammate. It's gonna be Flanagan coming up from the left side of defense. Looks to take it around, looks to cut it back, but has it taken away well by Harpler. Mark Harpler, clearly not a, just a guy who has scored a couple of goals for Virginia Tech, but a good player back there on defense out of Lucerne, Switzerland, and most recently Roanoke College. The substitutes looking to come into the game for Virginia Tech. Look to be Cameron Lennon, who's gotten plenty of playing time. He's a sophomore, and Khalil Dover, a freshman who, by my notes, has only played 44 minutes, so. Physically impressive kid, Dover. You see who both Dover and Lennon take out of the game. Nothing stirring on USF, actually, when I say that. A couple of players have the lime green tanks on. Looking like they're going to warm up here any moment. Bulls have the ball in their own half, and they're down 1-0 on the goal by Virginia Tech's Christo Strickler on a goal mouth scramble off of a corner kick. Virginia Tech has the only two corners of the game, and it was the second one consecutively where he found the back of the net. Four shots apiece. Adrian Billhart has a couple. Jose, Josue Monje and Jonathan Rosales with the others for the Bulls. Ball is headed out of bounds, and because there's a USF player set to substitute in that will result in both teams being able to bring in their benches. Frederick Gill enters the game for the first time. Looks like he is going to replace Avion Flanagan. Gill, a sophomore from West Palm Beach. End of the game on that defensive side. Trey Jackson gets the ball and looks for Scoobloch immediately. Right hand side. It's a one on five. He needs across someone to cross the ball too. And instead is going to drop it off to Rosales. Back to Scoobloch, right wing. Hokies back in big numbers, but a pass out to the front to Laval trailing. Ball back into the center. Misplay by Virginia Tech. Rutterham drops it off. Laval takes a crack, but well over the net. It'll count as a shot, but one that Mr. Richard Laval would like to have back and play it with a little bit more accuracy the second go around. So the Bulls certainly have had a good response here after giving up the goal. Certainly don't look overwhelmed. And that's one thing you want to be sure about is you're playing this tough of a schedule that you're not just getting outclassed. And the Bulls haven't been that way. You might look at the second half of Michigan when it got away from them, but that had extenuating circumstances, namely the red card. And you play a bunch of ranked teams, and you know, it can happen. Wins don't come easily, and it's not going to be the case here tonight for the Bulls. 33 minutes down. USF still trailing it. One to nothing. Oh, a long ball played, and Virginia Tech gets onto the ball. That's the sub, and he is going to Khalil Dover show an outstanding bit of acting coming right off the bench as he looked to uh, the first sign of contact near the penalty box. Fly in the air with the greatest of ease, but good job of the official not falling for that. My opinion on fouls and especially penalties being given, given in soccer, is you really have to absolutely earn it. I mean, it can't be anything close. I know technically a foul in the penalty box, it doesn't matter if it's a normal foul. If it's a normal foul, it should be a penalty, but I think it's got to be something completely obvious and taking away a clear goal opportunity, which that was not. Adrian Billhart, opportunity here for the Bulls. Trey Jackson looks for the head of Scoob Block. He gets away from him, but it's still in the box. Billhart settles the top of the box, fakes a sh shot, then takes one. It's blocked again by the Hokies. A call for a handball. I'm not sure exactly what USF wanted there, but it was instead a foul on the Bulls. Incidentally, so far today, 
couple of the conference teams have already gotten their game started. And I told you it was going to be a test of a weekend for the UConn men's soccer team. And sure enough, exactly passed the first test. Again, against two tough opponents this weekend, Notre Dame and Indiana. They lost a game this afternoon to Notre Dame 3-0. And Memphis loses this afternoon. The Tigers picked to finish in last place. Had a win in that draw their first weekend, but lost on a Friday to Coastal Carolina. Other games in action tonight. Decent pass, Scoop looks it go. Oh man, and just regretting his decision right away is Bill Hart. He shoots it well over the net, and that was a wonderful dummy by Skublik, who must have eyes in the back of his head because that was the definition of letting one go, and Bill Hart had to go to his less favored left foot. And, well, we can see why it was less favored. Didn't exactly have control of that one, but still, the Bulls continue to add to the offensive possession here, and with Monhey, and now Skublok really starting to get into the flow of things. And Alex Jackson out there, getting a little bit more encouraged about the Bulls' opportunities to score here. Nine minutes left to go in the first half. They're yet to score today. They're yet to score this season, but clearly showing that they just need that finishing touch. Cupid on defense. Passes it back to his goalkeeper, Devin Mears. Now to the recent sub, Gill. Heads it up the field on that left side to Alex Jackson, Virginia Tech, playing some aggressive defense. Gets the ball away from him. Another substitution. It'll be the third of the night for the Hokies. David Sines comes in, S-A-N-Z. And certainly somebody that the Bulls are familiar with as he comes from Cincinnati. Going out of the game is Emil Koho, the sophomore from Finland for the Hokies. And Sands um, was a Cincinnati Bearcat last year. Had six goals and five assists. Last year was their top score. And so kind of an interesting guy to come off the bench. In fact, Virginia Tech has another player who played for Bob Butehorn, a redshirt senior, Arson Sobers Asue, Asue, I'm sorry, and hadn't gotten into the game yet, but was the Florida Gulf Coast second leading scorer a couple years ago on the team that came to Tampa in the first round of the NCAA tournament and beat the Bulls in a penalty kick shootout in the first round of the NCAA tournament, so. Just a player that the Bulls have seen. Again, he hasn't gotten into the lineup yet, but a player that the Bulls had coached coached a couple of years ago. That's where Bob Buhorn came from, the UT alum. Bulls very happy to have him. And just like last year, starting off the season with a very, very difficult schedule. Game three here tonight, the Bulls find themselves down to Virginia Tech. David Sands instantly passes the ball, has a decent feed, but it gets away for, well, it's going to, be ruled to have come out off the ball. So this is going to be corner kick number three. Sons actually is a little bit shaken up. He keeps shaking his legs out. And you know a guy that just came into the game doesn't want to move right out of it. So we'll keep an eye on that. And I'm sure the Hokies will as well. In our first little bit of a gripe at the officiating, but I think it's been very good here tonight. Not that I would rush to tell you if I didn't think it was good. I don't think that's been the story at all. Virginia Tech's third corner kick. They scored on their last one. Six minutes to go. It's cleared away well by Rosales. It's going to go out of bounds on the left side, though, so the Hokies can try a throw in from there. And you'll have to forgive me on some of these, especially in the far corner on the throw-ins. No binoculars here tonight and <laughs> no TV monitor, so. Until they invent jerseys where the number just takes up the whole jersey, it's gonna be hard to identify who's taking the corner kick on the right-hand side for the opponent. And especially with the humidity and the condensation on the glass in front of me. There's a attempted 
feed into the center of the box, but Harrison Devonish mirrors all over it there. So Virginia Tech has had the better of the play for the last few minutes. Ooh, uh, maybe a risky looking play by Devonish mirrors, but fortunately for him and the Bulls, Steven Rutterham was quickly up to take any danger away. By the way, that was Kasich feeding that ball into the center, and you can see why he has three assists. He is, even though they haven't all found a recipient on the connecting end, a lot of passes tonight that have been right into the area where you'd want to put them. And he's got three assists coming into this game out of the four goals that Virginia Tech had scored. They've got a fifth, one here tonight, and they got a chance here. Virginia Tech with a shot, and Harrison Devonish mirrors stops the effort by Dover, the freshman from Reston, Virginia, looking for his first goal, and probably could have a little, put a little bit more on it. Falls quickly up the other end. Bill Hart, ooh, tried to feed it through to Skublik, but Moyers did well to block it for the Hokies. Monhe, who's gotten out of the play here for a few minutes, gets back into it. Give and go with Laval. It's back to Monhe. Sees Jackson, who's been camping out there on that left wing here tonight. Monhe. Back to Jackson, and the Bulls have kind of dribbled themselves into the corner, but the throw in still is to come. Less than four minutes to go in the first half. USF and Virginia Tech. Eight shots apiece. But Hokies have gotten more on net. Devonish Mears, in fact, has had to make six saves. I've talked about the Hokies with their blocked shots. Swanafeld has only had to make one save on the other end. Well, that was an interesting situation. A foul on Virginia Tech. Everyone saw it and anticipated the whistle, but I didn't actually hear the whistle. But everyone stopped playing. You know it's an obvious foul when the ref doesn't have to blow the whistle. That was a little unique. Either that or I just didn't hear the whistle. I'm going to go with everyone was so on the same page and it was obvious. Now Adrian Billhart with the foul. A little too far out to take a shot. Probably going to try and find the head of Thomas Skublak, if I'm guessing. Bill Hart from about 35 yards would really have to get the goalkeeper wrong-footed here. And he is going to go with that left foot. And they spoke earlier about it being his non-favorite foot. And there's the chip, but not high enough for anybody. And still ricochets around. Everyone on the bulls appealing for handball, including Bob Butehorn, but it's probably asking for help that wasn't about to arrive. Dover. On the counter for Virginia Tech. Looks for a trailing David, David Sanz, but intercepted by the Bulls. Now we have a whistle. Must have a player hurt. Yeah, down on the right side. That's my fault for not seeing a fallen Virginia Tech player. And he is down on the ground. Not going to be able to identify him, but certainly hope he's okay. There was a scramble in front of the net. And you know what can happen on those. It can take some serious contact. Sorry about that noise. Someone will have to, at halftime, move my uh, microphone that is sitting, if you couldn't tell, in a nice position, at least it looks like it is, the crowd mic, on top of the railing right in front of me. So you can definitely hear the crowd. But also, it's a long railing. And so someone clearly at one of the ends that I can't see is taken to bopping the railing whenever they want. So I'll move that. No need for you guys to have to put up with that audio, but we want to definitely give you the sound of the crowd. And it is a good crowd here tonight. We had a food truck. In fact, still a food truck. Serving some Mexican favorites off to our left. I saw the concession stands. Flavored popcorn. I almost grabbed myself a bag of Sriracha cheddar, I saw that was one of the options, but I don't want to be picking out popcorn while I'm calling play-by-play. -play. Derek Sharp here. Thanks for listening to us. Whether it's on Bulls Unlimited or on YouTube, we will present to you most, if not every single one, of the Bulls home games this year. Of course, on Bulls Unlimited every single morning during the week. From 7 to 9 in the morning, we have Bulls Beat, which is a half hour of all USF information. So if there's a game the day before or practice the day before, you'll hear highlights. You'll find out what happened. I'd like to talk to the coaches. Talk to Denise Shelty brown USF women's soccer head coach, after their game on Thursday, which saw the Bulls go to 
Three and one on the season. Oh, that guy is right next to my mic asking where the facilities are, see? A little flavor for you there. After that delay, and looking none the worse for wear is Will Mejia, who had to go off the pitch and came on back on after one second. So with two minutes and five seconds to go in the first half, both teams back at full strength. So fortunately, no apparent real injury there to Mejia, just a little bit of a shakeup. Ooh, that was a shakeup by Rudderham, and he may be hurt. He's going to pop back up, fortunately for the Bulls. There was a little bit too much drama there. Rudderham looked like he was knocked down. Grab the Hokies player, at least try to for purchase, and obviously is okay, but that looked pretty bad for a second there. Bulls find room in the center of the field. Skublak looks to turn on his defender and does, and the shot is right to the keeper. Swana felt it was a outstanding shot by Skublak if it had been really, honestly, to either side of the keeper, it would have been 1-1. That's all you can ask. Get it on frame. And he sure did there with pace. Could have had a little bit more on it, but again, you like the bull signs offensively here tonight. One minute remaining. Just heard the PA man announce one minute. You'll hear the countdown, which is a little bit of a unique situation in college soccer. The players on the field know exactly when there are 10 seconds to go. There's no injury time. At least it's not hidden. Foul called against Bill Hart for the Bulls against James Kasich. It looks like the Hoagies are in no hurry here. With exactly 35 seconds left in the ball on their side of the field and a free kick, basically it looks like they're going to take their time and make it the last chance of the half. In fact, cementing that is John Ingeson, the sophomore defensive player who looks up at the clock and take, lets another 15 seconds tick off before he boots it with 21 seconds left. So this will be the last effort for either team. Falling down there is Lennon for Virginia Tech. Bulls keep it in bounds and would really be good just to keep it away from the Hokies here because they are too far from goal and the ball is out of bounds. And that is how the first half is going to end. So the Bulls find themselves trailing and now have played 225 minutes of soccer this season and are yet to find their first goal. Christo Strickler scored midway through the first half on a corner kick, goal mouth scramble. And that certainly has been good enough for Virginia Tech here tonight, which leads it at the break by the score of one to nothing. 45 minutes, maybe more left. The Bulls wouldn't certainly mind that. That means they would have tied the score. We will set you up for halftime when we come back. This is USF Soccer on Bulls Unlimited. Hey, Bulls fans, get your game on with Hooters. Every Thursday night throughout the season, come meet Rocky at our North Tampa Hooters on Bruce B. Downs. Tickets and gear will be raffled off throughout the night, along with limited edition Hooters USF koozies and pint glasses. So come see us. Visit OriginalHooters.com for the schedule. Hooters, get your game on. The original wing joint, celebrating 35 years. Valley National Bank is the proud presenter of USF football and is excited to support our nation's veterans. Every time the Bulls score a touchdown at home this season, Valley, in partnership with the USF Foundation, will donate to the Valley for Veterans Scholarship Fund. Over the course of the 2018 USF football season, Valley for Veterans will provide $75,000 in support of first-generation student veterans. Horns up, Bull Nation. Member FDIC, equal opportunity lender. USF trails Virginia Tech at the halftime. Right now in Baton Rouge, the USF volleyball team is up two sets to one, looking to get a win against Texas A&M Corpus Christi. Earlier today, the Bulls lost to Duke, but really had a dramatic comeback in the third set to force a fourth set before they lost in that fourth set. We'll have some halftime, halftime stats before we resume play here, but for halftime, here is a little bit of Joey's journal as Joey Johnston spoke with several of the members of the USF football team this offseason. Of course, the team kicks off its season tomorrow. Mazzy Wilkins, an outstanding member of the secondary and also, of course, a local kid, spoke with Joey. Here is Joey's Journal, featuring in this case, Mazzy. It's time for Joey's Journal. Longtime Tampa Bay sports journalist Joey Johnston, now part of our USF radio network, sits down with a current member of the football team. 
He'll go beyond the stats and highlights for a more personal outlook. With today's student athlete, here's Joey. And we are talking today with USF cornerback Mazzy Wilkins from Plant High School. Got a very productive season in 2017. Mazzy, you had interceptions, uh, three of them, in the first five games. Uh, how do you account for being so productive early in the season like that? It comes from having a good camp. During fall camp, I worked really hard. I bought into the system. I took the time to go out there every day and just work and get better. So when, when by the time the games came, it, that's the easy part. Getting through practice is hard, always harder than the games. Coach was saying that when spring practice began in 2017, maybe you weren't on his radar. Uh, somehow you worked yourself on that radar. How did you get yourself noticed? How did you get yourself to in that position where you became a starter? I mean, I always knew I was a good player, and I had the confidence within myself. I just had to prove it to other people, so I had to take steps to where I can actually show my ability so I couldn't, I didn't get hurt. I would stretch extra. I would make sure I lift enough weight so I can stay healthy and maintain through the season. And I work really hard just so I can stay crisp. When you were here redshirting and, and playing as a reserve player, did you wonder if you'd have a bigger role? Did you ever fear that that wouldn't happen? Or did you always have confidence that you'd be a key player on this team? Going through it all, you, you have your ups and downs. You make plays, you don't make plays. There was times I would, I would doubt myself, and that's when I had my family and the people who love me the most in my corner to always support me and raise me up. So I always, so I always, but at the end of the day, I knew what type of player I was, and it just took a, one instance for it to clip fire and me to get an opportunity to go and show everybody what I can do. What do you think you have to do to get coaches to notice you? I mean, for for a football player, what what do coaches like to see out of players, and how do you how do you catch their eye? I feel like the main thing is just consistency. Like anybody can go out and make one good play, like, and then give up three bad plays like the, the key is to be consistent and you have to be very attention to detail especially at cornerback position so that's what I went and worked on the most if you're a good receiver can you be a good defensive back or is it a different skill I feel like if you're an athlete you could be a good defensive back I'm not going to say all receivers can be defensive backs because you have to have fluid enough hips and you're also you're reacting you're not you don't know what you already have already so I couldn't, I, I would say it's 50-50. What makes a good defensive back? I mean, what separates the, the good ones from the great ones? How, how do you, what skill set do you need to have to succeed back there? Three things. It comes down to your mindset. It comes down to your hips. And it comes down to your ball skills. And like, when I mean mindset, you have to have that dog in you. You have to have heart or like, you can. You gotta be confident in yourself to line up with anybody, and you have to know you're gonna go win, and you have to be able to battle with the person, play in and play out, and oppose your will on them. So that's the first thing. Your hips have to be loose, and you have to have really good footwork because that would that will allow you to be in position to make the plays you want. And then the ball skills, like. Everything is about the ball. Football, everything is about the ball. So you want to give your um, team the best opportunity they can to win. So having ball skills is critical to be able to intercept the pass. For the fans that are sitting high up in the stadium watching you guard a receiver, what, what is it like down there when you're one-on-one -on -one with a guy? Is there a lot of talking going on? Is there, is there a lot of imposing of the will on each other? What, what's that one-on-one -on -one confrontation like? I mean, I, for me, I'm, I'm locked in. I'm very focused. By the time I get to the game, I'm, our, I'm, I'm focused, but I'm loose. I'm really confident. My, I'm a totally different player. I'm a totally different person than I am, like, if you see me on the street. So I, I want to make it a street fight. I want to make it. I want to make it as hard on, on my opponent as I can because I know my coaches made it hard on me to get to that point. So I have to impose, oppose my will on them to make them earn it. The cornerback is the kind of position where sometimes maybe you, you don't get noticed until something bad happens. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of pressure on you back there. How do you, how do you handle that 
I mean, that's when that's when I say your mind, like a, a good defensive back has a, good, a different mindset from everybody else. They, you notice when if you walk onto a team, defensive backs, they you could tell their swagger, you could tell their confidence before you even talk to them so by the way they look, by the way they carry themselves, and that's how you deal with the pressure. Like it's really not pressure because you've been in that situation for so long, you've been you've been put under so much pressure. It's gonna either bust your pipes or create a diamond, so you're going you're going to come out there and you're going to do what you do. That's that's what you're born to do. That's what that's when you become a football player. You're born into the f- football world. That's what you're supposed to do. You know that from the jump. So you just it's just a mentality. Now, last season, of course, you uh, you made it all the way to the Birmingham Bowl and, and won, um, and you were a key starter most of the season back in that secondary for a defense that played really well most of the season. What were the highlights for you of, of the 2017 season for you individually and also for for the team as a whole? The highlights was just getting, like, sending the seniors off the right way. Like, I came in with that class. We all in 2014 class. It was like, it was a long journey, you know, going from a, when we got here, we were four and eight to switching it all the way around and going two years, only losing two games. So like that was probably the best accomplishment. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie, like it was a it was a bittersweet feeling because we didn't see that then because you know we had so much more higher expectations for ourselves, which was the winning conference championship. So at the time we was pretty bummed out, but now I look back on it, that was a very high that was a highlight moment because our class really came in here and did our thing and just changed the program around, like we said. And then for me, my personal highlight, I'll have to say was my first interception because it was like things starting to unravel for me. Things are coming true. All the dreams that I lay in bed and think about and dream about is, is happening. I done got my first interception. Now I can just go out and play football and just enjoy the moment. and and show everybody what I can do and prove everybody wrong. We're talking with Mazzy Wilkins, the USF cornerback here on Bulls Unlimited. Mazzy, the 2018 season is coming up, and I know you guys have some big goals ahead. What uh, what do you think you need to do to become a better player on this team, and what kind of goals does this team set for itself in 2018? Um, for, for myself, I feel like some a goal for, that I put on myself is to become a better leader. I want to – I really – it's already a standard that we can go 10 and two or 11 and two. I, I feel like it's time for us to do something different. We not, we not raised the bar that much. Now it's time to go to the next level. So I want to become the best leader I can to help push my team to get to that conference championship and win. And then also, I just want to be more consistent with my play, like play in, play out, oppose my will on everybody. I want to show them that I am the best player in the conference and uh, and possibly the nation. That's always my mentality when I step on that field. So that's what I'm going to do and work on every day. We'll be right back with more of our talk with Mazzy Wilkins. You're listening to Bulls Unlimited. No need to grab a pencil. Joey's already jotted down all the notes you'll need. Let's return to Joey's Journal on Bulls Unlimited. Welcome back to Bulls Unlimited. This is Joey's Journal. I'm Joey Johnston, and we're talking with USF cornerback Mazzy Wilkins about the upcoming 2018 football season. Mazzy, one thing I want to ask you is about your name. It's it's an eye-catching name, and it probably gets mispronounced and misspelled a lot. It's M-A-Z-Z-I. It's pronounced Mazzy. What's the story behind your name? Why are you Why are you Mazzy, and do you like being called Mazzy? When I was little, I used to not like my name. I was. I used to be self-conscious about my name because people would be like, what? What's your name? And they always mispronounce it. So I asked my mom, like, how did she name me Mazzy? And my mom was like, that was your dad's decision. Like, my dad's very different, and he reads a lot. So he was reading through something. I have no idea. And it, Mazzy came up, and they was like, yeah, we're going to name you Mazzy. And to this day now, I, I kind of I love my name now. I'm a defensive back. I'm a corner, you know. In NFL, there's a lot of different cornerbacks with some weird names. So I feel like it, I fit the profile. Like, I, I, I love it. I support the name. I, I go with it. I like everybody else to know it because I know that nobody else would probably meet another Mazzy. So. Have you ever met another Mazzy? 
I actually have not. And how do you get people to pronounce your name properly? <laughs> if I'll be, I'll be like, my name is Mazzy, but they really don't understand. And I'll be like, say Jazzy, but replace the J with an M, and it's Mazzy, and they get it. So yeah. Now you were, you were telling us that earlier when you were a little guy, one of the things that you did for sports, you played lacrosse. You may be the only USF football player with a lacrosse background. Mm -hmm. How did that come about, and and how good of a lacrosse player were you? I mean, I went to an after after school care from like like all the elementary school, and I did taekwondo there. And the instructor, his son, started playing lacrosse at my high school plant, but I was still growing up. And I used to always like take a stick and mess around and play with it. So then one day he like he was start he started noticing like I was like interested and so he started throwing me the ball back and forth. And then I told my mom like I wanna play lacrosse. So we found a YMCA little D League lacrosse thing. I played there for like a month. And then some of the guys on that team, they, they told me about a team called South Tampa Sticks. I'm not sure if it's around still, but yeah, I went and played there for a few years. And how good of a lacrosse player were you? Did you have any huge scoring games or anything like that? I was actually one of the best players on my team, just for the fact that I was so I was just way more athletic than everybody else. But I loved that sport. It was really fun. I scored a lot of goals. Is it a lot different than football? Are there skills that are transferable between the two? I say. Lacrosse definitely helped me because I'm a defensive back. I play corner, and the way you guard people in lacrosse is like playing basketball. So you're shuffling and you're doing a lot of lateral movement. So when it comes to playing cornerback, when you're pressing a player at the line of scrimmage, you're making the same movements, the same cuts. So I feel like it definitely was a great introduction to my career now. You're listening to Bulls Unlimited. We're talking to USF cornerback Mazzy Wilkins, who before he came to USF was a member of the Plant Panthers. And that's a very successful program in Tampa, wins a lot of championships. Do you think the success that you had there has made you a better person, a better player for college? Definitely, definitely. Our games is like a college atmosphere. Our practices were like college practices. Our just um, out of season program was like college. So it, it definitely prepared me. But and that is going to be the end of our halftime show because they apparently the Bulls are really excited to get back on the field, get this game back even. Derek Sharp here, a freshly squeegeed. I can't wait till it's not summer anymore because the glass just gets so much condensation on here when it's humid. And yes, that was me being the squeegee guy, which is fun, actually. It's not been completely fun for the Bulls, even though they certainly show that they belong in this game and are just waiting for that breakthrough. I have a feeling when it comes, it's going to go rapid fire with a couple of goals. Adrian Bilhart already in this game with five shots. Remember the Bulls? In the first two games, had a total of five shots, or nine shots. They had that many in the first half here tonight, so that gives you, as clear as any illustration, an idea of how the game has gone. It's certainly been one where the Bulls have had their opportunities. But then again, Virginia Tech, to be fair, even though they have one fewer shot than the Bulls, and have required more saves to be made by the opposing goalie, the Bulls. Harrison Devinish Mears has made six saves as compared to just two from Matthias Swanefeld. Virginia Tech probably had, uh, in all actuality, as many you know, in hockey where you have scoring chances, even though a shot doesn't necessarily result in flow of play kind of thing. Virginia Tech certainly has shown that. Again, this is a Hokies team that made the NCAA tournament last year, won a game. They've won a game in each of the last two years in the NCAA tournament. In fact, winning two games a couple of seasons ago and won all three of their preseason games this season and are off to a 2-0 start and looking to make it 3-0 here tonight. But they have allowed a goal in each of their contests and maybe that's something that the Bulls can hang their hopes on here in the second half as they go from right to left. Oh man, that is a hard, hard foul. Unfortunately, Adrian Bilhard is going to pop back up even though that was when we're I guess the studs of the cleats were not up, but that could have been very dangerous. 
told you about some other teams in the conference, everyone playing on a Friday night, which is usually the case. UConn losing to Notre Dame 3-0. Memphis falling to Coastal Carolina. UCF has a 3-1 lead at the halftime of its game tonight. Cincinnati has just taken a 2-0 lead on Cleveland State. UCF, by the way, playing Liberty. And then Temple and VCU, the other conference game in action. VCU scoring right before the half to take a 1-0 lead on Temple. Temple, the team that knocked the Bulls out of the conference tournament, I mean being able to play in the conference tournament last year. There are a minute to go. Uh, gone here and a free run by, oh, man, the ball gets away from Strickler, and that's a good bit for the Bulls that he was not able to control it with that first touch. The Bulls swore he was off sides, but he was on and maybe couldn't believe his luck because that first touch was just so ragged. And now the Bulls all of a sudden looking to answer on the other end with Rutterham. See Skublik in front. Trey Jackson calling for it on that left wing, gets the pass. Looks to go around an opponent. Jukes him out, he's gonna go to his right foot. Doesn't like the shot there. Offer of help from Gill, who now gets the ball and is gonna drill it low right to a defender. Jackson gets the ricochet, gets some Air underneath it, ball is cleared away from Virginia Tech though. Bill Hart gonna go to that left foot. Oh, a little bit of a curl on that one, a decent attempt. But it's just a little bit high. So, shot number six for Adrian Bill Hart here tonight. Move my crowd mic away from that post where a couple of people were either putting their head on it, so now you can actually just hear the crowd. It's a good one here, man, walking around at halftime. You can see, as is usually the case for Bulls games, a lot of members of the other athletic teams, along with plenty of fans, alumni and otherwise, kids here on a youth night. It is just packed. You have people sitting on the, even though it's a little damp, hillsides on either ends of the goals here. And just hoping to have something to really cheer about here in the second half. But the Bulls trail it two and a half minutes into the half. One nothing. Virginia Tech has a throw in in its own defensive third, and as the ball was going out to an obvious throw-in opportunity for Virginia Tech, Bob Butehorn, the Bulls coach, was motioning his players to come this way. In other words, keep the pressure on. Don't let Virginia Tech get comfortable here tonight. Good ball from the goalkeeper to Mark Hopler, who moves up and flicks it up to Kwashi, who is going to be, yeah, that's a tackle. Even though he's too big to be tackled to the ground by Cupid, who he probably, even though heights and weights aren't listed on both rosters, I'm gonna just by eyesight say that Kwashi, the big junior for Virginia Tech, has a good 50 pounds on Cupid, who was really trying to post him up and it didn't work. But Virginia Tech goes backwards with the free kick. Could that be an early sign that the Hokies are just gonna try and play a possession game here in the second half? We'll see. They work it all the way back from a free kick 50 yards from net to their own goalkeeper, Sonnefeld. And they lose possession as Hoppler lets it get away from him. Bulls have it. Gill, a first half sub, still in the game. For the Bulls, Frederick Gill. Oh, a back heel pass by Skublik. Tries to find Gill, who runs onto it. What a pass. He's getting onto his right foot. He's going to flick it off. There's Rutterham. He's going to have a go over to. A trailer back to Bill Hart. Looks to line one up. That's a good looking shot and it's saved by Swanefeld. Man, oh man, that all started with a nifty piece of work by Skublik. And to his credit, you know, sometimes the fancy pass is you know, the easiest part. You still have to mount something and Gill did a good job to create a chance there for Bill Hart. Now the ball speaking of creating a chance, have a corner kick. It was their second of the night. The only goal of the night came off a corner by the opponent. See a lot of the Bulls defenders now moving up into the box. Marcus Murphy, good tall frame on him. He's right in front of the goal. There's an in-swinger and it's cleared away by Virginia Tech. Trying to run onto it out there and putting in some good work is Monhe, but he loses the ball. To the Hokies. Monhe with the 
corner kick. That was Rosales out there. Gill has slotted into the left side of the defense alongside of Cupid. As the Bulls still trying to get that right combination in the back, Murphy seems to be a solid member of it. The freshman Laval as well. Now back up the wing, Trey Jackson turning on the Jets, although he is caught up to. Cuts it back. Behind him is Monhe. To Gill, who's becoming a part of the attack here. A good searching ball into Skublak. Heads it behind him to Bill Hart's looking to find Skublak's head. He gets a head on to and it's just wide. Boy, you could read that the entire way. And Bill Hart puts his hand, hands over his head as if to say that was it. And Skublak knows it too. It was a perfect cross from the right-hand side by Skublik, uh, by Bill Hart to Skublik, and he heads it a, a good three feet wide of the post. Just so happens that where my vantage point is, you could tell that was going wide the whole way, but you could also tell that it was a dangerous opportunity for the Bulls, and that came on 51 minutes of this game. A bit of a Injury stoppage here, so we'll remind you if you're listening to us on Bulls Unlimited on a Friday night. We'll be well into the first game of the football season, this time in 24 hours as USF and Elon get it going. Saturday, live on Bulls Unlimited. Four o'clock is the pregame, six o'clock the first kick. Jim Lout and Sam Barrington. I'll be part of the pregame crew. Back in action here, and Rutterham looks to create here, has multiple options, and can't decide which one he wants to go to, and Virginia Tech dispossesses him, but the Bulls are back on it. Monhe thinks about passing it to Gill, but instead it's going to dribble around Hopler. Wow, decent job there by Monhe. He's going to have to send it back to Laval, who goes to Cupid. Oh, man nearly intercepted in the middle of the park by the goal scorer Strickler and he would have you know, would have been on again by himself like he was in the early going of this half. Ball chipped into scoop buckets down and booted away. Rutterham had a shot and got to say that Swanefeld now has made a couple of tough saves in this second half as the Bulls continue to press forward for an equalizing opportunity here. Certainly, certainly feels like it could be coming. And now a corner kick for the Bulls. A kick save. First time Swanefeld has had to go that route. Adrian Bill Hort, corner kick, and he's going to go short corner. Jackson knocks it back to him. Bill Hart's going to look for scoob luck again. That time the ball is, doesn't get the requisite air, but it still pops out. Long shot, gets through, intercepted by Scoobock, and that ball is blocked away. Again, Virginia Tech coming up with the goods defensively. This time it was Mejia. So both teams first have substitutes. First subs in the game have really, well, I'm sorry, Mejia has started this game. My fault, he um, wasn't listed on my roster as a starter, figuring because he hadn't started either of the first two games, but he has made some big plays here tonight. Monhe with the corner kick this time as the Bulls rack it up. Ball is low, driven, deflected back to Bill Hart. Thinks about taking it out of the air, instead settles it right at the top of the box. Back over to Monhe. Bill Hart left side, looks to cross it. Has Monhe, gives him a chance. Now comes in the cross right footed, and it's headed away. Virginia Tech controls it this time. That's the first time in a while that they've had a clearance that was controlled, but it's stolen back thanks to the efforts of Cupid. And now it's a long effort by Jackson. It's, it gets blocked. I don't know if you can count that as a shot, but the Bulls are starting to rack up. Even before then, oh, and there is a collision. And let's hope Strickler is okay. I think it was just, yeah, in fact, it's not gonna be given as a penalty. It was just a scary collision. And when I say penalty, it's in the middle of the pitch, so it would have been just a foul, but getting up right away is Strickler. He's been in some serious Dramatic situations in this game. Christo Strickler has the only goal as we approach 55 minutes. Has a would-be breakaway early in this half that he couldn't control. And has a big clearance of late and then looked like he was in dire straits only to pop back up. Which happens in soccer from time to time. We are right on 55 minutes. Bulls have 
plenty of time here. And if they can continue this pace, I just feel like they're gonna score one at some point. They gotta be able to get one past Swanefeld, boy. <laughs> Unfortunately, the Bulls almost got it past their own goalie there as Corey Cupid's pass back to Devin Ishmeers was a little on the iffy side. But Devin Ishmeers was ready for it. The player that hasn't played too much for Virginia Tech getting set to check into the game. We'll tell you about him, a sophomore in a second. But the Bulls are on the attack once again. It's Monhe from Jackson. Monhe with the ball back to Rutterham. Who had the great chance to score just a little bit ago. Thinks about a long ball in, but instead drops it to Bill Hart. Bulls have four players near the penalty box, but they have to check back up as the Hokies play the trap, and that ball is well out of bounds, and so it's going to be Virginia Tech ball, and here comes that substitution. Only Hoppler out of the, the game. game. The Hokies, number 31, Jacob Lombard. So clearly they are more. Sometimes the stats are a little bit misleading than Mark Hoppler, who had two of their four goals coming in, and I'll even recall him having a shot tonight. And it's going to be Jacob Lumler from... Germany, from Bad Homburg, Germany. Never been there. Sure, it's nice this time of year. He's only played in three minutes this year, so keep an eye on the sophomore defensive player who slots into the right side on defense. It is humid, as I've been telling you, and maybe Hoppler didn't get quite that humidity in Switzerland. Boy, a little bit of uh, tensions arising here between the foul was called against Virginia Tech's Roy Slevin, but Monhe didn't like the fact that Slevin wouldn't let him get up immediately to take a quick restart. And there'll be a little theatrics there on both parts. Ooh, man. Quick restart again. Scary boy. I got to say this for USF's Corey Cupid. He's confident in his playing abilities as far as the ball getting it back to the goalkeeper across now three times tonight. It's pretty much a Virginia Tech player in intercepting range, and it's gotten back to Devin Ishmeers without any difficulties, relatively speaking. Dover, the freshman who came into the second half. A good ball in and a good clearance there by Cupid. That was a scary situation. And the Bulls haven't gotten out of danger yet. Now they are. As the ball is taken out of the danger area by Laval, who's going to get back into position. Ooh, USF takes one off the head there. Was that Gill? Off the bench and into action? Yes, it was. And now the Bulls have it going up the rest of the way. And the other way, I should say. And again, contact. Rutterham has to throw away a Virginia Tech player. And now they're going to call a foul. Oh, that was offsides. Okay, here's what happened. Rutterham. And now he's talking, actually, to Slevin about it. So Slevin's been in two interactions now with Rutterham. So we'll keep an eye on that matchup. And Slevin is getting a talking to the Virginia Tech senior out of Middletown, New Jersey, by the head official saying, enough of this stuff. I like that this official is, hasn't made any bad calls yet, but hasn't been free flowing with the cards. He's letting them play physically, but now just realizing that, okay, when you get to the point where you're having these post play, post whistle gatherings, that's, that's, that's not soccer any longer. And I think that was a conversation he just had. Now an offsides and a rare one against the Okies. Check in here in a second on the USF volleyball team. Yeah, they are having to work against a team that came into the day winless. Texas A&M Corpus Christi, it's in the fifth set. USF leads it 13 to 12 after winning sets one and three, dropping the fourth set. Now they're in the fifth set. We'll let you know when that one's over. If the Bulls go to four and one on the season. So, women's soccer is three and one. Volleyball is three and one with a chance to make it four and one. Hopefully in the next couple of minutes. And soccer is 0 and 2 and right now unfortunately on the road to 0 and 3 unless they get a goal. Cameron Lennon in for the goal score here tonight. Christo Strickler, a sophomore out of Hilliard, Ohio. A wide variety of destinations that these players on the Hokies roster hail from. And they've all come together for Mike Brinsadine's staff here. Oh, that is definitely a foul, and the ball puts his hand immediately up, and it was against Levin, and that was a veteran move and a 
very smart one by Richard Laval, realizing he didn't mean to do that, and instead of letting it play out in a dangerous fashion, realized that he had made a mistake. Virginia Tech had a quick restart there by Moyers, and his ball was on a path, but to a possible goal scoring opportunity, but Nico Kwashi could not get to it. USF on the other side of the field now, heading right to left. We'll have a throw in as we are just past the hour mark. USF now with 17 shots. Not all of them on goal, but that gives you the idea that they are really giving it a shot. In fact, the Hokies have more shots on goal than the Bulls, even though it's a 17 to 8 overall shot advantage. That tells you a couple things. The Bulls have missed wide. Scoop block with the header, the one that really sits here tonight. But another chance for the Bulls, and Scoop block has it. it. It gets loose and it's cleared away again by the Hokies. So just as he was ready to pull the trigger on another shot, he got booted away. But also the fact that Virginia Tech, like that, has been blocking shots. Bulls have seen their opponent with eight attempts and seven got on net. Oh, Monhe pulls back a pass by Skublock, thought about letting it go, instead drifts it out to Jackson on the left side. Monhe with a chance to work with the ball, instead slots it back to Gill, who is going to try and get Jackson. That could be a tricky play on this wet turf, and it is, it bounces high and out of bounds. Anything that's gonna be high through the air here tonight is gonna be prone to a bad bounce, even though the turf here at Corbett Stadium has Held up pretty well, not just to the rain today, but seems like the last three weeks straight, it's rained pretty much every day. And it was just brutally toward rain the day before here. 62 minutes in, Bulls continue to press, press forward. Virginia Tech looking just to control the ball, get a little possession. Landon, the sub, the sophomore from Austin, Texas. Gives the Hokies modest possession, but it goes right away, Gill. Playing some solid minutes off the bench for the Bulls. Over to Cupid. Almost gets away on that right-hand side from Rosales, but gathers it back. Nice switch by Rutterham. Monhe flicks it up to Skublik, who sees Bill Harvin on his right side. He's going to stay with the ball, but now he's running out of room on the right side of the penalty box. Bill Hart looking to play instead. Monhe a trailer, and the pass is just a little bit too Nifty, and it's intercepted by the Hokies, who now have a possible three-on-three. Three. Bulls getting numbers back, it becomes a three-on-five. And well knocked away by Rosales. So the Bulls... Sometimes you just gotta take that shot, and that's the one thing they haven't done tonight. Bill Hart had the one from the top of the box in the first half, and it was well saved. And you know, you often see those shots from that area. You gotta pick a side, and the Bulls haven't done that. They just tried to more or less get it on frame and it's been either blocked or gathered in with relative ease by the Hokies goalkeeper, Swanefeld. So I think it's gonna take guessing here, hopefully it's something fluke here, anything to get the Bulls on the board. It's gonna take a decision to crank one from that 18 to 25 yard range, but pick a side and go with it instead of centering it, making it easier for the keeper. Adrian Billhart, a tricky ball, almost bounces over his frame but he gathers it over to Gill back to Bill Hart and for a second time now in the recent run of play entering for the Hokies number 10 Chris Little Gill tries to pass up the left wing with little room to spare and it's out of bounds so Virginia Tech gets the ball also allows them to make a substitution Chris Little a freshman from Fairfax Virginia Tech on the Florida swing will head from here to take on UCF on Sunday. I know there's no crossover with tonight's UCF opponent, Liberty. It'll be the Bulls instead on Monday night playing Creighton. That's a good no call by the official. A player absolutely flew through the air like he'd been shot out of a trampoline by Virginia Tech, but there was no foul there. And this ref really is making the right calls on everything, I gotta say. USF maintains possession. It was a all ball situation by the Bulls player. And catching the ball and soaring through the air was the Hokie. And even though it looked violent, it was not violent. And as evidenced by him getting up right away after realizing he didn't get the whistle. 
No substitutions for the Bulls this half. Another one I mentioned, the former player for Bob Uthorn at FGCU about to check in. We'll tell you about him in a second, but the Bulls, as they keep doing every time I look down, have a chance to go forward here. And it's Gill again leading the way. Jackson, Monhe, could this be the shot? Bill Hart's on his right foot, tries to sweep it over to the right side. And it just wasn't there to be had. Good build up by the Bulls, but Bill Hart leaving something to be desired on the last pass attempt. Virginia Tech, I don't think we have statistics for possession, but I'm going to tell you right now, just watching the game, we've played 20 minutes in a, I think at 21 minutes in the second half, it's, it's been about 75% possession for the Bulls, and they have it again. Monhe, so Virginia Tech definitely trying to hang on here. Gill up to Jackson on the left wing. Closed down, as the Hokies are good at. That time it was Mejia getting to him. Gill, a good looking ball. Bill Hart tries to chest it down, but he goes to a Hokie. Jackson in the middle of it. Tries to head it on over to Bill Hart. Ooh, a little too cute with the pass there. And now the Bulls starting to show some signs of frustration out there as I think everybody now some shoving going on. Oh, that's got to be a card in the goalkeeper. You can't push another player, and that's what Swanefeld just did. I don't know exactly what led to the confrontation. Honestly, I looked down at my monitor for a second, and it's scoop luck out there. And it was just one of those things where the keeper for one team and the player on the other team sort of jawed each other. Yeah, and he gets a card for sure. Swanefeld talking about the goalie for Virginia Tech. To the delight of the fans here. You can't, maybe you can give somebody a little bit of a nudge, but that was a extended arm. And I'll be honest, you watch something like that. I saw it a couple times in the Premier League this past weekend where there were several Reds handed out, I think maybe five or six. And you would have, <laughs> someone wants a foul in a box. Yeah, that's a good point. It's a, it was a foul in the penalty box. But, and that, if, it, if you had that exact contact, which Swanefeld, the Hokies goalkeeper, put on Scublock in the Premier League, Scublock's falling down like, you know, he got punched by Muhammad Ali, but he's not that kind of player. And the Bulls might have gotten something there. I'm not calling for that sort of acting, but just saying, could have happened, didn't. Now, Butterham has the ball stolen, but Billhart gets it right back. Subak making a crossing run. Bulls need to get some numbers forward as Virginia Tech has pretty much everyone in the box. Scublock with a crossing ball chested down. Well done there by the Hokies because that was a situation where it might have been easy to play the ball with your hands, and that's something you obviously don't want to do in the penalty box. But good job by Ingeson for Virginia Alex Tech. Ziz. Alex Ziz into the game for the first time tonight for the Bulls. And he is certainly a player that can put some spark into the lineup. So Ziz played plenty in the first two games for the Bulls. But gets into the lineup for the first time here tonight. Played 53 minutes in the opener against Michigan State. Played 45 minutes against Michigan, and again is in for the first time. Also in for Virginia Tech. I told you about Ariane Sobers Asue. Again, he's the one who played for Bob Uthorn's FGCU team a couple years ago. Made the NCAA tournament. Crowd got excited there when Scublock played the ball forward to the player off the bench, Zeus, but the keeper read it the whole way. So, yeah, number 11, and this is the curious thing. He's a redshirt senior. He's out of Miami. Went to high school up in Maryland. Two years ago was eighth in the country in points. 11 goals, 11 assists for Bob Uthorn at FGCU. That's the team that came here and beat USF in the first round of the NCAA tournament. Had a teammate, by the way, Albert Ruiz, who had to have been first in the country in points because he had 22 goals and five assists. That's the way had, uh, what was it, 33 points, and the math on Ruiz would be 49. And anyway... So a player like that, top 10 in the country in scoring two years ago, but just sort of getting a few minutes here and there for this Virginia Tech team kind of tells you how good the Hokies are. 
Just 34 minutes in the first two games. Hokies have a free kick here. It's Ingeson up from defense to take it with the left foot. And that's a good looking ball. And they're going to let it roll to Devonish Mears and he cannot corral it. It's going to go out of bounds. Ingeson gets a point of approval from one of his teammates. Good ball in, tricky enough. That has led to a corner kick, which will be taken by Slevin as we near just 20 minutes left in this contest. Bulls volleyball team did win in five sets tonight. Decent looking cross from Slevin, but headed away by the Bulls, and now Ziss is gonna go the other way with it, although it's two on four. Well, he's fresh off the bench. I guess we'll see how fresh he is right now. Pushing him out, and maybe a little bit too much pushing there by Mejia. I'm sorry that's Howley, but it'll do the job. Slow the attack down for the Bulls, but it speeds back up. Rutterham to Jackson, right back to Rutterham. Left side of the penalty box, right inside the box now. A trailing, Ziss off the bench, and a low shot goes wide to the left. Boy, that was a wonderful setup by Jackson. And you hear the applause, and if you didn't see it, it came from the USF sideline as well. Kind of the setup that would just lead to a typical looking goal if that ball had just been put inside that post. I don't think the keeper was going to get to it. So already, is this doing what you want for a player off the bench to do? Create some offense and create some energy. Monhe, oh, now jukes out Mejia for Virginia Tech, but the Hokies get some support. Now the ball switched the field over to the right. Just inside the Hokies' half. The ball in the center. Back over here to an unmarked Gill. Left into the center for Ziss. Pops it back to Gill. 71 minutes gone out of the 90. Scoob block. Puts up that frame. Gets a turn. He's going to have to try it, drive it low. And it's knocked away. Boy. Again by Virginia Tech. That is Howley who, a freshman from Norway, man, you could just tell. I definitely don't think we have block statistics, but man, he is outstanding. Big frame, six foot five. But it's still a corner kick for the Bulls. They'll be taking their fourth, and it's by Trey Jackson. That's a good looking one, but that one is headed well by the Hokies. Man, they are firm with those headers. Nothing shaky about them. But coming out of the corner to regather it is this. A decent ball into the box by Gill. Back out and flicked nicely by Rosales. And he gets it back and he's in the box and that one's cleared out for another corner. So now corner number six for USF. With 18 minutes left, I just have the feeling if they get one goal, they'll get two. Man, you wouldn't have to necessarily get them in these next 18 minutes, again in college soccer, if it's tied after 90, you have 20 minutes more to really decide if you're tied or not of sudden death overtime. Decent ball in by Monhe, headed away. It's coming out to Rosales. He's going to drive it low back to where the corner kick came from for Monhe. Ball's floating around in the box, but it's calmly played by Ingerson back to his goalkeeper, Swanefield. Virginia Tech. Certainly doesn't appear to be as stressed by the situation as a team that has been holding on to a 1-0 lead for well now nearly 50 minutes wouldn't ordinarily be. And it helps when you have a keeper making some good saves. Now Virginia Tech into the box. Ball is knocked down low but knocked away by the Bulls. And that was Gill. And now he is just racing up the side and across the center stripe after making a clearance. His pass to Skublock. Not quite corral. The Bulls made any substitutions this half? Looking at my sub chart here. No, they haven't. Except for Ziss, of course, who is just in the last five minutes and has already had a near goal. He, Skublock, both with shots just wide in this second half. The Bulls certainly have had their chances. 
Ball goes out of bounds off of Virginia Tech, which will be a goal kick for the Bulls. Entering for the Hokies, number 15. Another substitution, the goal scorer coming back in. That's Christo Strickler. Trey Jackson is going to take a seat for the Bulls for the first time tonight. Gets a nice round of applause. Looks like Diego Guerrero. Number 17, Mark Hoffler. Sophomore from El Salvador for USF. Entering for the Bulls, number 14. And this Diego would be his Guerrero. first action of the year. In game number three, he comes in with about 15 minutes left. Let's see if the 135-pounder can get something going. Played in 11 games last year for USF, started four. Did have six shots. Bulls haven't had an issue with shots here tonight. Doubling their prior season total. Again, they had nine total in two games. They're at 18 here tonight. But only four have required saves. They've been blocked or they've been a little bit wide. However, you got to say, Swanefeld, the goalkeeper for Virginia Tech, has come up big a couple of times. Bulls have it, as they've had it for much of this second half, which has 15 minutes left in it. Off the bench, Guerrero, who has the same orange boots as Rutterham. So now the Bulls have two guys out there, Adidas, with some sharp uniforms all the way around, Cupid. Up to Ziss. Oh, a nice short pass, and onto the ball is Rutterham, but out and off his line quickly is Swanefeld. He might have taken one off the head. There is going to be a stoppage of play here, and immediately going to check out, knowing that he made contact, is Rutterham wants to make sure that Swanefeld is all right. And both teams are going to use this opportunity to grab some water. At the same time, sometimes... You get this full water break in a soccer game, and it's clearly a theatrical situation when one player is deciding to stay down for a few extra seconds. I think there was definite contact there, and the Hokies are going to send out their training staff to go look at Swanefeld. We hope he's okay. We'll keep an eye on him. It does look like a player who's got the goalie shorts on is warming up. That might be Connor Jordan Hyde for Virginia Tech off to my right. It was a smooth pass, and Rutterham, if not for the quick reflexes of Swanefeld, would have just had to nudge the ball to score. But he quickly came off the line, and that made the contact even more dramatic and hard. He pops up. Looks like he'll be okay after taking a few swigs of water. Looking at some other scores, not just in conference play, but teams that the Bulls play this year. You always want to keep an eye on your opponents. When they're not playing you, you root for them to win, right? That's their UCF for some people, but UCF is leading 4-1. to one. In fact, already has a W tonight against Liberty by the count of 4-1. to one. Well, Stetson just going up 3-1 to one on FIU, an NCAA tournament team from last year. Both those teams will play the Bulls this year. Stetson will be a big win. Winning for the Bulls, number 8. Adrian Billhart. You just heard Adrian Billhart will pop back into the contest for the Bulls as the goalkeeper Swanevel pops back up. A women's score of note. Temple women defeat Maryland tonight, 1-0. It's a nice one. Baylor, team that, uh, of course, USF women's team defeated. Playing Arkansas, that's a heck of a matchup, 2-2. Two two. Team that USF played Monday night on the men's side is Michigan beating Cal Riverside tonight, 3-0. And we are back underway. Here are scores, 1-0 Virginia Tech. It's been that way since the 24th minute. We are in the 76th minute. And the Bulls have had the vast bulk of play since then. Nice maneuvers there by Rutterham. Right back into it are the Bulls. It was a fantastic flicked pass by Monhe, well, Guerrero is kind of lurking on this left wing where Trey Jackson was the guy who replaced, hung out the entire game, and maybe thinks that Virginia Tech has forgotten about him. For the moment, if the Bulls can switch the field, and that side of the field where Guerrero is suited up is where the Virginia Tech substitute defensive player is, so file that one away. Maybe they can use that left flank, but right now in the middle to Ziss, and a chipped pass attempt. Three possible runners could have gotten onto that one. Would have been Rutterham or Guerrero. 
or even Gill, but it went over all of them. Ooh, that ball was deflected up the park. And a possible break in now by Virginia Tech and a good pass across the pitch, but well, knocked away by Laval. Wonderfully, the Virginia Tech bench wanted the foul. It was Sobers Osaway with the pass. And Laval saw it coming the whole time. Scoob block. One on two. Does have Guerrero to his left. Thinks about lining it up. Gets it knocked away. Drops it off. That's this. Over to Bill Hart. Has a chance. That ball's knocked away. In the middle, though. Knocked down by Guerrero, and that ball's knocked away. Boy, if Guerrero could have gotten to that to one time it. I'm sorry, that was Rutterham. I knew I'd get the orange cleats confused. Oh, in all alone, one on one, and a save by Devinish Mears. It was a offsides trap beat by Sobers Asue, and he had an absolute one on one with Devinish Mears, who blocked it with his feet. And the Bulls maintain their deficit at one nothing because it should be two right now. And Virginia Tech coaches wanted a foul on that previous clearance by Laval, but he got all ball and was a great defensive play by the freshman. But there was no defensive play there. Bulls were on the wrong end of a perfectly timed run by Sobers Osaway and he just couldn't convert. Biggest save of the game by Devinish Mears, who gathers in that much simpler header by the same player. So the Hokies grab a couple of shots here. Oh, that's a long shot, you know, and not a bad idea by Virginia Tech as Devinish Mears was out of his net. And if that ball had had a little more accuracy on it, I think the Hokies... John Ingeson makes it 2 nothing. So the Bulls having all the chances really to speak of for much of this last 30 minutes. Just two good ones there by the Hokies. Long ball played up to Guerrero. Shows those fresh legs off the bench, but just can't quite, can't quite get to it. I thought I saw, I was going to say, I saw that ball is going over the end line. It was just a late call. That's definitely a goal kick. It was kind of a strange situation, Guerrero. Was that a full sprint, the kind of full sprint in the 80th minute of a soccer game that only someone who just came into it would be able to pull off, and even it caught up to him there at the end. One thing that the Hokies are doing is starting to shuttle in more bodies to the lineup. Will Mejia, who got the start his first of the year, is about to check back in. Long ball, Bill Hart tries to get onto it. Bad clearance by Virginia Tech, and it's the defensive player, Ingeson, screaming at his keeper to come out and get that one because he really had nowhere to play it. Couldn't play it back to the keeper in such tight quarters. Didn't want to play it over the goal line for a corner kick, so had to play it out of bounds, and that's why the Bulls have a throw in. Into the box, Scoob block. Looks to cut it in. That's a decent looking pass, but it's just nudged away with the head. It's going to come onto a rushing. Gill, that's a low shot. It's deflected. I'm telling you, you must have a good dozen block shots here tonight, the Hokies. Bulls are going to have to try one that curls in and around the side of either post. I think that's the only way because these low shots are getting blocked. We're just going to have to come up with something big. But Air Force and Gardner-Webb both managed to go past Swanefeld. So he doesn't have a shutout to his credit, but he does have as many saves tonight as he did combined in those first two games, namely four. So 20 shots, but only four being saved. That really does speak to all the block shots here tonight. Just more than nine minutes to go in regulation. Bulls down one nothing. Hoping to get something here. There's this. He's got Bill Hart behind him on the right side. Bill Hart thinks about crossing the field. Says cross, cross it to Scoob Black. Could get ahead on the ball, but out to play at Swanevelt. He's left the goal empty, but the ball gets away from Rutterham, and Virginia Tech takes control. Up to Strickler, and that's going to be a nice flicked pass to Asue, and he gets it knocked away by Corey Cupid. Great reaction from the Bulls' defense and from the Bulls' crowd. Appreciating that. Great crowd here tonight. Haven't seen anybody trickling out of this game. They, like me, just feel that eminently the Bulls could score here. 
against a team that has made the NCAA tournament two straight years and is undefeated so far in this season. Virginia Tech, now the ACC. Virginia Tech, three and five in the ACC, but got an at-large bid and won an NCAA tournament game. 10 teams from that conference out of the 48 in the field last year. Offsides against the Hokies. Another quality opponent, one that the Bulls played on the road last time they met, will come to Tampa on Monday night, the Creighton Blue Jays. That is Monday night. If you can't make it out, we'll have the game for you on Bulls Unlimited. Two future opponents of the Bulls, Stetson and FIU, squared off tonight. Stetson with the win. Both teams looking for their first W of the season, and the Hatters get it. With the right-hand flank for Jacob Wimler. He finds that man again, sobers us away, and man, he not as easily handled balls. It probably should have been for Devonish Mears, a goalkeeper for the Bulls, who doesn't languish in that scary moment. Instead, rips it up the pitch so the Bulls can get it going. And that's Laval looking for a foul call, but the ref says play on, and the Bulls do have something here. Until it's been intercepted. Ooh, Rutterham, that's an interesting decision for the referee, and I think he made the right one once again. Two players, a 50-50 ball. Both went down, and Rutterham might have initiated the contact, but it was ball first, and he let it play on. This official is really doing well. You don't see such perfect games like this from an uh, official. Virginia Tech with a great setup there, and Strickler, the goal scorer, the Hokies, gets two, the short cross off to his head, but it's Brenda headed Moyes. wide. A good opportunity there for the Hokies. Three substitutions Here's now for 16, Virginia Tech. Felipe Batista. With one for the Bulls. And, and number 17, Felipe Trey Baptista Jackson. in for the first time tonight. The freshman out of Pembroke Pines. Trey Jackson back in on that left side. Got a little rest. His replacement, Guerrero, did a pretty solid job, but Jackson clearly in the last six minutes here needed that little break to hopefully regain his energy and get the Bulls on the board. Baptista, the third bull, wearing the bright orange cleats. Funny that the Bulls have more players wearing orange cleats than the orange wearing Virginia Tech Hokies do. Ooh, good ball up the right-hand side, but Cupid, who has, well, he lets that one roll out of bounds, but I was just about to say, Corey Cupid has done a fantastic job of diffusing dangerous situations here tonight. Now the Hokies are going to take their sweet time before this throw-in. As I say that, it's probably a lot quicker of a throw-in than I would have thought from Jacob Bloom. Of course, he's a sub. He wants to get something going. Here's a decent chance. Oh, and blocked again by Cupid. It was Quashi on the right side. Looked like he had something going, but Cupid knocks it away. Out of bounds. It'll be a Hokies throw right around midfield. Four minutes, 45 seconds left in this one. And Virginia Tech continues to lead it. Now the Hokies are trying to get that put away goal as the Bulls are pressing forward in numbers. They only have three back and a good clearance. It's gonna lead to a throw in for Virginia Tech. So while Virginia Tech has four along that back line and two midfielders who anywhere anywhere near to the scoring area right now, which you would normally be in this situation, they're still trying to create something here. Roy Slevin, who's been in the middle of a lot. There's Blummer. Feeds it to Strickler. The goal scorer drops it off as the Hokies are taking their time around the penalty box area. Chris Little. And now they're playing possession. This is really the first string of possession that the Hokies have had in quite some time. This is why you do those drills in practice. Just maintain possession, aren't even looking to advance the ball at the pitch unless something breaks like it just did for Strickler. A cutback pass 
that the Bulls are going to be able to clear away. Now it looks unfortunate like USF, and it can happen when the other team is just passing the ball around to itself. It can make you look like you're tired because, well, frankly, you are. They've been on the chase for quite a while here. Ball is played back in tight space by Cupid to his goalie, Devonish Mears, who kicks it far up the pitch, and now the Bulls look to regain possession. The ball, left wing. Gill, Ziss, who's been a spark off the bench. Nice flick pass up to Jackson on the left side. Tries to put a few moves on, does, and good recovery there, but Jackson's still fighting for the ball, and it's going to go out of bounds for a corner kick. Will Mejia and Jackson had a great battle there. And the Bulls fans who were on the hilltop behind the attacking goal for USF approve of that. They would really like to roar in approval here on the corner kick. And there's a vast shortage of time, two and a half minutes. Trey Jackson's going to let this one go. On the left-hand side, I'm sorry, that's Mullenhay, and it's cleared away pretty well by Virginia Tech. The Bulls are pressing everybody up now. And it was Ingeson who's been the calmest of the Hokies back line in my opinion today. Jackson has to wait, a long ball up. There's a foul, no call. Guess there was no foul. But the Bulls don't care because they've still got a ball in, in a good spot here with Trey Jackson's. This on the crossover, Jackson's gonna loft it and again, coming out of his net, choosing the right time to do it as he has a lot in this half is Swanefeld, the goalkeeper for the Hokies, who all of a sudden is going to forget how to kick the ball. Now he remembers, conveniently 10 seconds after that amount of time clicks off. And it's headed away by the Bulls, certainly something they wouldn't want to do there. Virginia Tech, a throw in as we hit 90 seconds left on the clock. Our next soccer broadcast will be Monday night, Bulls, and Creighton, this one's not over yet, but unfortunately it's not looking good for USF, down one nothing with a minute, and now 10 seconds left. Last gasp for the Bulls, Virginia Tech just looking to play possession here and just knock the ball up in the air if that's what it takes, and they do so successfully, still have it at midfield. Well controlled, now they just knock it out of bounds, but still, that'll serve the Hokies' purposes as it's deep in USF's end with less than a minute to go. You'll hear the countdown in the last 10 seconds. Start in, well, 45 seconds from now. Bulls exhorting everyone to push up now, even the goalkeeper, Devinish Mears. Why would he be in the goal? Well, maybe for that reason as the ball is played back deep to Cupid with just 20, 35 seconds left. And now, you've got to say, it doesn't look well with 25 seconds left. This could be it for the Bulls. Virginia Tech's just gonna clear ball. They can't clear it. Oh, that's a break, possibly. Laval, up to Gill. Now everyone is up. Decent looking ball. Could they let it run? There's a player for the Bulls. It's Bill Hart. He's got a chance and it's saved. A kick save with 12 seconds left. As it, you can see was gonna get to him. Bulls try and get it back in and won't be able to do it. Wow. The ball flew over a horde of Virginia Tech defenders, and you could see if Bill Hart could just control it, he was gonna be able to get possession of the ball, and he did, and one last cruel strike and a save by the Virginia Tech goalkeeper who Matthias Swanevelt definitely deserved the shutout. Bulls get 22 shots on net, and five were saved, including a big one right at the end. And they lose one to nothing. Bulls fall to 0-3 on the season. We'll be back at it Monday night against Creighton. I want to thank you for listening to soccer on Bulls Unlimited. I'm Derek Sharp. Have a good Friday night.